Hello everyone. Welcome to Simply Learn. Maths and statistics for data science are essential because these topics form the basic foundation of all the machine learning algorithms. In fact, mathematics and statistics is behind everything from shapes, patterns, colors and algorithms. So, today we'll discuss two important topics of statistics that is confidence interval and hypothesis testing. We'll discuss how to use it, when to use it, and the real life application of the same but before we begin if you haven't already subscribed to our channel please do so so that you never miss an update let's move forward estimation and confidence interval using descriptive and inferential statistics you can make two types of estimate about the population one is point estimate and other is interval estimate a point estimate is a single value estimate of a parameter for instance a sample mean is a point estimate of a population mean. An interval estimate gives you a range of values where the parameter is expected to lie. A confidence interval is the most common type of interval estimate. Both the types of estimate are important for gathering a clear idea of where a parameter is likely to lie. The confidence interval is a range of values. It is expressed as a percentage and it is expected to contain the best estimate of a statistical parameter. The two most frequently used confidence interval are 95% and 99%. A confidence interval of 95% mean that it is 95% certain that our population parameter lies in between this confidence interval. Now, what is level of confidence? With respect to estimation problems, Alpha refers to a likelihood that a true population parameter lies outside the confidence interval. The level of confidence is denoted by 1 minus alpha and it is usually 90%, 95% or 99%. Alpha is usually expressed as a proportion. So if the confidence level is 95%, then alpha will be equal to 1 minus 0.95, that is 0.05. Now, let's move on to discuss what this confidence level means. A 95% confidence interval of the mean is a range with an upper and lower number calculated from a sample. Because the true population mean is unknown, this range describes possible values that a mean could be. If multiple samples are drawn from the same population and a 95% CI calculated for each sample, we would expect the population mean to be found within 95% of these confidence intervals. 95% of the sample means for a specified sample size will lie within 1.96 standard deviations of the hypothesized population mean. Similarly, for 99% confidence interval, 99% of the sample means will lie within the 2.5 standard deviations from the population mean. Now let's see how you can calculate the interval estimates. The interval estimate can be calculated by adding and subtracting the margin of error to the point estimate. It gives us the idea of how close the point estimate is to the value of parameter. The general form of the interval estimate is x bar plus minus margin of error. To calculate the interval estimate, we have the formula x bar plus minus z s divided by root n, where x bar is the sample mean, z is the number of standard deviations from the sample mean, s is the standard deviation, and n is the size of the sample. Now that we have discussed the interval estimate and the margin of error, let's understand all this concept with the help of an example. Suppose a student measuring the boiling temperature of a certain liquid observes the readings on six different samples of the liquid. He calculates the sample mean to be 103.4 and if he knows that the standard deviation of this procedure is 1.2 degrees. We have to calculate the confidence interval of the population mean at a 95% confidence interval. So using this formula of interval estimate, x bar plus minus z into s by root n, we'll find the confidence interval. Here, x bar is 103.4 and z value is 1.96, corresponding to 95% confidence interval. And standard deviation is 1.2 divided by root 6, which is a sample size. So calculating 
will get the value to be 102.47 and 104.33 which shows that it is 95% certain that our population parameter lies between this confidence interval. What is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing or the significance testing is a method for testing a claim or hypothesis about a parameter in a population using data measured in a sample. The purpose of the hypothesis testing is to check if there is enough statistical evidence in a favor of a hypothesis that we have claimed. Now we will move on to the research question. A research problem is a broad issue that you would like to address through your research. It identifies a difficult doubt or area of concern in the theory or in practice that requires thought and investigation. Research objectives are clear statements of what you aim to achieve through your research. There are specific actions that you will take and act as a milestone that will help you complete your research. A research question is a specific concern that you will answer through your research. It is derived from a research problem but is based on a study design. When you narrow down on a research problem to a specific idea that points towards a feasible way to investigate or address the research problems, you will get your research question. Now, what you should really take care of is there is a slight difference between a research question and a hypothesis. Hypothesis makes prediction about an experimental outcome, whereas research question does not. Let's understand with the help of an example. Suppose your research question is how many hours per day a student spends on a gaming and you want the answer for that. Another research question may be Do the college students with more study hours can achieve a higher GPA than the students who do not put in more hours for study? These questions can be answered by framing a hypothesis. So let's understand what a hypothesis is. A hypothesis is a tentative statement about the relationship between two or more variables. It is a specific testable prediction about what you expect to happen in a study. The hypothesis is a prediction but it involves more than a guess. Most of the time a hypothesis begins with a question which is then explored through a background research. Hypothesis translates the research question into a prediction of expected outcomes. Unless you are creating an exploratory study, a hypothesis should always explain what you expect to happen. So as in the previous slide, we have framed a question that how many hours per student spend on a gaming. Relating to this question, we can create a hypothesis that students who spend more time on gaming are socially alienated. So there are some good criteria for a good hypothesis. Let's discuss what are those. A hypothesis should be compatible with the current knowledge in the area and it should follow the logical consistency. It should not be inconsistent in places. A good hypothesis must be stated briefly and clearly. And it should be testable. Now we will understand what a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is. The null hypothesis is the assumption that the event will not occur. A null hypothesis has no bearing on the study's outcome unless it is rejected. H0 is a symbol for null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis or a research hypothesis is the logical opposite of the null hypothesis. The acceptance of the alternative hypothesis follows the rejection of the null hypothesis. Let's understand the null hypothesis with the help of an example. Suppose you have a research hypothesis that the duration of an advertisement on the TV channels is positively related to the sales of the product. The more the duration, the more the sales of that product. So, the null hypothesis of this assumption would be that the duration of the advertisement on the TV channels are not related to the sales of the product. They are not related at all. Now we will move on to the test statistics that are frequently discussed when creating hypothesis testing. The test statistics is a number calculated from the statistical test of a hypothesis. It shows how closely your observed data matches the distribution expected under the null hypothesis of data statistical test. The distribution of the data is how often each observation occurs and can be described by its central tendency and variation around the central tendencies. The test statistics summarizes your observed data into a single number using the central tendency, variation, sample size and the other number of predictable variables in your statistical model. There are broadly three types of statistical tests. Different statistical tests have slightly different ways of calculating these test statistics but the underlying hypothesis and interpretation of the test statistics stay the same. So the first one is a t-test. A t-test is a statistical test that is used to compare the means of two groups. It is often used in hypothesis testing to determine 
whether a process or treatment actually has an effect on the population of interest or whether the two groups are different from one another. The null hypothesis is that the true difference between these group means is zero and the alternative hypothesis is that the true difference is different from zero. Now let's move on to Z-test. Z-tests are a statistical way of testing a hypothesis when either we know the population variance or we don't know the population variance but our sample size is greater than 30. We perform the Z-test when we want to compare a sample mean with the population mean. The next is an F-test. The F-test or the F-statistics is simply a ratio of two variances. Variances are the measure of dispersion or how far the data are scattered from the mean. Larger values represent the greater dispersion. Despite being a ratio of variances, you can use the F-test in a wide variety of situations. F-test can assess the equality of variances. However, by changing the variances that are included in the ratio, the F-test became a very flexible test. Now that we have discussed all the theories related to the hypothesis testing, let's take an example to understand them more clearly. Consider a study on a group of students where the students receive a special learning aid through the online videos on science. It is hypothesized that after viewing these online videos, the group of students score better than the one who have not seen the videos. So in this case, a research hypothesis will be Students who have received the special science learning videos will score high in the science competency test. And its null hypothesis will be the special science learning videos made no impact on the scores of the students. Now we will discuss what a significance level is. Level of significance or significance level refers to a criterion of judgment upon which a decision is made regarding the value stated in the null hypothesis. This criteria is based on the probability of obtaining a statistic measured in a sample if the values stated in the hypothesis were true. Generally, the criterion or the level of significance is typically set at 5% or 0.05. This value of significance level can also be taken as 1% or 10% depending upon your requirement. If the result obtained from the study indicates the probability lower than the significance level, so in this case, a researcher can reject a null hypothesis. Otherwise, if the result of the study indicates the probability higher than the significance level, the researcher can support the null hypothesis. So, with this we have come to an end to this tutorial. Thank you all for watching this session. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section of this video. Thank you again and happy learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.